Hey guys, so I want to welcome you to a brand spanking new video. I hope you guys are doing well. This is definitely going to be more of a quick video <laughs> um, versus what I'm used to doing. So yeah, I hope you guys are liking the kind of new quick tips and things like that. Um, but before we dive in, I love for you guys to like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. And also um, for those of you that are interested in learning how to use branding to sell uh, more of your low content books, you can head over to check out my flagship course, which is called From Published to Profit. A link is going to be in the description. And then I have some freebies for you guys as well. One is going to be the swipe file and list of over 200 types of low content books that you can publish and sell. And then also I have a free masterclass that features uh, the seven step framework that I use for publishing and selling low content books on Amazon. Now, another thing that I've uh, recently created is going to, going to be the Journal Creators Collective. Now, this is for you if maybe you're interested in starting a journal business or you're not really good with journal design, you struggle with it, and you're looking for an easier way to kind of create journal covers, interiors, and things like that. I have a whole vault and list of resources that I think will be helpful to you. So you can click the link in the description to check that out as well if you are interested. All right, so now let's get into today's video. So I know that Q4 is right around the corner. I have been meaning to do a more in-depth video, but I figured, you know what? I'll put together some tips and three things that I usually do every year for Q4 to kind of prepare for the onslaught of sales, hopefully. And I'm fingers, fingers crossed, toes crossed, we all do well. And um, I really would love to hear some success stories from all of you. But these are three things that, um, you can definitely do um, to prepare yourselves and to hopefully sell more books in Q4. We're already in it, but let's dive off. All right, so coming in at tip number one is going to be to optimize your book listings. Now, you don't have to do this for every book. I would say make a list of your top 10 books, the ones that make you the most sales. And I would definitely go through each one of your top 10. Or if you're feeling froggy <laughs> and a little bit more adventurous, you can go through your top 20, but definitely your top 10 books. Go through those books, optimize your book listings. And this is going to include things like checking your book's product description. Your book's description is like a mini sales page, right? When somebody lands on your book, you want them to be encouraged to buy. You want to use power words in your product descriptions. You want to use really nice bullet points and format it really, really nicely to where that when people come, they're really like, oh, wow, I really want to pick this up. I mean, it's, you know, the product description is really getting to me and um, it really has some things that are jumping out at me that really make me want to buy this book. Now, if you're not good with writing your own product descriptions, I would highly recommend using ChatGPT. This is what I use. I'm going to put a prompt below that will help you guys, but this is what I use all of the time to help me come up with good product descriptions for my books, because sometimes I just can't write them the way that I want them to come out. So using chat GPT is going to work well in your, to your advantage. Now, a second thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your cover designs are on point. So if you have a book and you you know that you can probably get more sales out of the book and it's in your top 10, then what I would consider doing is maybe trying out a different cover, testing a different cover design. This is really important. I actually had one of my students in my, um, my uh, community that's a part of From Publish to Profit. Um, she actually talked about this and it was just really encouraging and it lets me know how the simple tweaks and things that you can do to covers to improve them can really make a dramatic difference. And so she said she had a book that she put a lot of work into. The book was making some okay sales, which was a good sign. However, you know, she kind of did some tweaks to the cover and it just psh, took off and it really increased her conversion. So I say that to you guys, if you have a book or some books that are in your top 10 that maybe are getting some sales here and there, but maybe you can, you feel like you can tweak them or tweak the covers to make them look, look a little bit better and stand out a little bit more. I would highly suggest that you do that. Okay. So that is what I would say would be tip number one. All right. Number two is going to be create a plus content specifically for all of your top sellers. Yes. A plus content has been a game changer. Um, I love it because number one, it's free. And um, number two, there's just so many things that you can do. Another quick and hot tip 
for using A plus content is going to be to, and I got to give a shout out to Paul Marles for this because he was one of the first people that I saw talk about this. And that is using comparison charts at the bottom of your A plus content with a link to related books. This has been an, a huge game changer. You know, people, when they're coming to your books and they're looking at your A plus content, you know, if you just have just the kind of modules with the, the talk about the book, they have some images of your books and interiors and things like that. That's one thing. But when you have other books that are related to that book that you can link together, that right there is really, really cool. And it can help you sell more books within basically that line or, you know, basically people are going to look at things like a series. And so um, that is something that you definitely want to remember. And so here's a couple of examples of what I'm referring to. Okay, so here's an example of what I'm referring to. And I think that this author has done a great job. They have a bestseller. And um, so they're doing a really good job of this. So this is a, a country autumn coloring book right here that is selling. I can definitely tell that this is AI, but it looks really, really good and professional. So let's go down and let's see how they have their A plus content design. First off, the images are stunning. <laughs> Whoever did this, kudos to you guys because you've done a really great job. But what I want to show you is this comparison chart at the bottom here. So you see that they have a lot of country kind of coloring books and things like that. But what I love is that all of them are linked in this comparison chart. So basically it makes it easy for someone when they're coming to look at one of their books, which is a bestseller, to look at all of the books that they have in their series that are linked together. So basically like if they wanted to come to a country kitchen, they can click on this and they can go over here and look at this book and so on and so forth, right? So that is definitely key and something that you want to add to your A plus content. Now, when you're in A+, if you're in the A+, content manager over um, in your account, you're going to go to marketing and then you're going to go to where it says A+, content and then you'll choose your marketplace, which is going to be .com. That's where I'm going to start with. I always start there. What you want to do is when you click on add module, this is the standard comparison chart right here that you want to use in your A+, content to give it this effect. Okay, at the bottom. So I just wanted to add that in there um, to let you guys know that's something that you definitely want to add. And then last but not least, at tip number three is going to be running multiple ads to your best selling books and then lottery ads for all of the rest. This is kind of how my setup is. So I don't run ads to every single one of my books. I cannot do that. That would be way too expensive. But for my best sellers, so I'll say my 10 best sellers, I do run multiple ads to those books to give them the best chance of getting out there, to getting ranked, and so on and so forth. So as an example, for one of my best selling books, I have a auto ad that's running. I have a manual ad that's running. I have, I think, a product ad that's running running. And so I have multiple <laughs> variations of ads that are running to that bestseller to keep it ranked, to make sure that it's getting as much exposure as possible and so on and so forth. And so I just wanted to share that tidbit of information with you guys. So these are the three things that I'm doing so far to get prepped up and get ready for Q4. But I'd love to know in the comments below, what are you guys doing? Like, how are you guys preparing? Are you prepared? Do you have all of the books that you want to publish published for Q4? And are you ready for it? So um, I'd love for you to comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this video. And then let me know again what you're doing to prepare for Q4. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.